Hey, what is up guys? Welcome back. So this is my daily plans and goals video. Nothing too much has changed since yesterday. I'm still going to go through. I think I'm doubling down now. I'm gonna I'm gonna make it. Alright, I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna make my make my sapper comp. Okay, I'm actually a bit lost of what I, what I was about to say. But anyways, I have I have these units ready. I've had most of them raised to 5 stars max level, but I did get a comment yesterday that reminded me of something. Uh, if I do the fusion for these two monsters, they will actually be returned to 4 stars level 1. Um, I think it's still worth doing because it's not that hard to... I mean, it's kind of a waste of essences. It was a waste of the, the mid essences, but I can still get a lot. Like, I have a bunch of these. It was a waste of gold as well, like raising units to, uh, to evil 3. It cost me like 600. Um, 600,000 in total, but you know, I can still get that gold back. It's not the worst thing in the world. Um, I would think it's still a pretty good idea to get them to, to, um, wait, maybe I can raise this one. No, I, why, why would I raise that one? That one has shittier gem slots. This one has better gems. Oh wait, no, I'm, that's not the right unit. It's this one. Um, Anyways, I, I think it's still a pretty good idea to, to raise them. It's a good thing they're not variants, because I think after the fusion they might become non-variants. So, you know, that might have been a waste as well. Like, I, I probably might have been really sad if so all of a sudden my Hana turned into a non-variant after the fusion. Um, that might be something you guys want to watch out for as well, because there's... I need to do the fusion. I also need to make, um, make them 6 stars, which is actually a pretty big investment. But I think it's something I can do within one week. Like, it won't take me two weeks to do this. Um, probably gonna have to wait till next week, though. Like, after the next week, I'm gonna have um, access to another Gleam. And then I can buy the Water one, and then I'll, I'll use that Gleam to... To, um... To make one of them... One of them, uh... Evo 2, I think. So... Yeah, that's something to watch out for as well. Like, if you raised it to six stars and you want to do the fusion, it might not be a good idea because it will return it back to four stars. Um, but I think at five stars max level, it's not too bad. Like, I can, it's not, it's not that bad for me. Like, to get it back to four stars because I can raise it back to five stars max level really, really fast. Um, anyways, I'm go I'm going through with a sapper comp. Um, a lot of you guys, a lot of a lot of the people before were like really, really against sapper comps. I read through the comments yesterday, and a lot of you guys are kind of supporting the idea of of me doing this. Um, I know for a lot of people that started playing the first month that have like access to the light Nike and an Evil Three Dark Jack, um, it might not be a good idea to do that. Like it, in your eyes, it might be just horrible because uh, like you know, ew, ew sappers. Um, but anyways. I, I think it's a pretty good idea for me who is who has started playing like late compared to a lot of the other players. I don't have I can't make an uh, well I can make an Evo three late Nike, but um, I'll have to do that. But like even if I do that, I don't have access to a per turn healer like the Dark Jack or the Water Persephone. I mean, I there there is another way to solve this problem. All I have to do is pull a Water Persephone. That that would probably solve everything. Um, but for for me who doesn't have access to them, there's only one like you know I've only thought of one way where I can actually um, a hundred percent make sure I can farm B10, and that is to, that is to use a sapper comp. With the changes to defense down and attack down with in the recent patch, um, things have become a little bit harder for a lot of players. Like I think for people that have just like barely been able to clear B10, I don't think. They might not be able to, um, you know, they they still probably would be able to do it most of the time, but it won't. It probably won't be 100% um, stable like like it was before for people who have just barely made it 100% stable. Um, since this change does affect a lot of things, like it makes attack down makes it so you you do less damage, meaning that it will take more turns. Like even if you you, you can survive forever, um, or you have the potential to survive forever. Um, more turns just means higher risk. More things can go wrong, and eventually, you know, some at some point something's gonna fuck up. You know, so that's just that's just something I, I've always uh, I've always thought about when I'm thinking of like a automatic farming team for 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 this game. Um, 
The next little thing is there's there's also the change to attack down, meaning that the self-sustained units probably aren't going to be able to make it anymore. I was thinking of a full self-sustained comp, like you know you know using the fire succubus, the wild fang, the uh, the the bolt, the flash wing, or the bolt wing, or storm beak, or whatever the hell they're called, um, whatever the evil one version was called, and um, and the vampire. You know the vampire can still stay the same, like he can still sustain because his his sustain is adrenaline. But people who use HP siphon, like uh, like her, if she gets attacked down, she's gonna do a lot less damage and she won't be able to sustain herself. So that might be a really really bad idea like I don't know if it's gonna be stable after after the change to to, to golems um, so I'm just thinking of reverting back to my sapper I'm just go back to what I was thinking before because this nothing big is gonna affect this comp I mean the their bonus defense is still gonna get cut in half but attack down doesn't affect them um, and also I really just have to build really tanky on them and they will still be able to do damage to the boss. I know B10 has really high resist, I've been running it a few times, but I've also had my armor break, you know, land on the boss a few times as well, like sometimes. Um, after a few turns, usually it lands at least once, uh, which leads me to think that if if I have like multiple people trying to land debuffs on the boss, something's gonna land and eventually he's gonna die. I mean, the run won't be fast, but I think it will be 100% stable if I can get them tanky enough. Um, especially if I can get these two to Evil 3, like things are just going to be super, super safe. So that's that's pretty much it for, for my plans. Um, right now I'm farming the jacks, like I've been farming a lot of the, you know, trying to farm a lot more jacks. I'm still working on getting her to Evil 2, still working on trying to get all the materials. I'm pretty close, I think. I have enough Cocos. Yeah, I have enough Cocos. I don't have enough sirens so I'm gonna be farming um, probably like I think seven more sirens and I'll have enough to to make her evil too and then I need to repeat that process a few times in order to make her evil three um, which is gonna be insane if, if uh, oh my god I, I don't know why I thought this was a good idea but um, maybe I'll pause like what I'm doing I'm still gonna be farming the maps because I need to level them up but I probably won't be actively trying to get her to evil three I'll just uh, keep her at Evil 2 for a while, farm golems for a bit, and um, you know, get my Sapcom ready, farm B10 for a bit, and then go back to what I was doing before. Oh god, my I think I'm losing my voice or something. Anyways, that's that's pretty much it. That is what I've been um, what I've been planning so far for this game. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. And I will see you guys in the next video. Peace out.